live. You know, oh. a live, and we are live. Why, hello there. <laughs> but we are. We are uh, doing stuff. Oh, look, screaming celery. What? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> you know, the old screaming celery. You don't, have, you don't have screaming celery? I Celery guess not. Scream where you're from? I guess not. Dang. Get with the program. <laughs> Glass, I just want you to know that I was about to say Canada's a weird place. Like, throwback to me forgetting that you don't live in Canada. But, uh, caught myself. Without uh, fail. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Plagues of Chalt, episode 7. Uh, where Alex. Uh, for the last 30 minutes has been like, oh, shit, I need to write an intro. I need to write an intro. Uh, and then guess who doesn't have an intro? Again. Anyways, that's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> so, train of thought intro. Here we go. Uh, where we last left off, the adventurers, the heroes of the Argent Oak, had uh, traveled down the River Olung to Kir Sabal, the secluded Aarakocan monastery located in the jungles of Chult. Uh, there they sought the knowledge of the uh, the mysterious teacher who uh, turned out to be an aged female Aarakocran uh, who was borderline worshipped by the other inhabitants of Kirsabal who called themselves pilgrims. Um, the journey was honestly pretty well managed. Uh, a sudden encounter at sea left their ship uh, enhanced by giant magic uh, and then the trip up the river itself was mostly uneventful uh, with a very obvious uh, incident on their last day on the river itself when they were attacked by a host of undead affected by the gray blight that they had been tasked to investigate uh but all in all the group handled those challenges fairly easily as they did the challenges of ascending the ancient and somewhat ruined path up the cliffside to kirsabal itself uh once inside they found that the aarakocrans uh specifically one aarakocran who seemed to be the leader of the guard of the monastery a uh, black feathered uh uh, bird-like fellow named Garrick. Uh, he was very, very standoffish and suspicious, uh, insisting that the group surrender weapons and uh, potential any potentially hazardous uh, equipment uh, for fear that the monastery's uh, openness and and trust could be exploited, hinting that such had happened in recent memory uh a bit of a standoff and a bit of uh of uh you know the adventurers who had been told not to trust the aarakocrans uh all that much um though maybe to to some extent uh out of ignorance of the aarakocran ways uh eventually uh after word got to the teacher uh, she came down, met with the group, and seemed to dismiss the concerns uh, of the the watch leader, Garrick, uh, and devolved into conversation with the group, where she shared a few uh, bits of her knowledge over the ongoings of the plagues, but also revealed that uh, she had acquired a strange magical artifact uh, that had some connection to the spell plague, uh, blight that was still lingering in Schult. Uh, she in requested, endeared upon the two wizards of the party, Mora Runebuckle and Joyce Deslinter, to assist her in studying the artifact, uh, which was very much a uh, a vessel for dipping Mora out of the campaign for now, as her work schedule has shifted with a new job and she can no longer join us on fridays uh we miss you mara i'm gonna kill him don't worry i'm gonna kill him all for you so you're not missing anything um 
Uh-oh. We <laughs> we pick back up. Um, we'll say that roll we, initiative. We'll say we'll say that the residents of Kirsabal uh, were as welcoming as as the party allows. Um, if the group wants to explore Kirsabal, they find a very you know like the, there's no obvious riches like piles of money lying around or anything like that. But it is just this like ancient monastery vibe. You know, some like gorgeous bits of art and like old statues. The people are welcoming. They would provide hot food, um, and you know, just just like the the atmosphere of acceptance that is certainly missing in the jungle, uh, if not, you know, also missing in Port Nianzaru. Um if we want to, we can fast forward through that night. The next day, Garrick has said that uh, there, there's uh, either Garrick and the teacher both uh, hinted that there were some uh, there was some involvement with the cult that they've been pursuing uh, off to the east. The people who visited uh, before and took some members of the monastery with them. Uh, very aggressively took, kidnapped even, um, and that Garrick would share more information on that in the morning. If there's any conversation the group wants to have during the night, we can. Otherwise, we can pick back up in the morning. Uh, I think one thing Katet might bring up is just uh, if if we're going to go pursuing these people who attack the monastery, we may want to get word to uh, Zandrash that will be held up longer than we thought in the jungle. That way a ship isn't just sitting at the inlet waiting for us if we're taking however many days it'll take to get to this cave that was mentioned. Joy speaks up. Oh, I can definitely make sure uh, he's alerted. Maybe you know, we'll try to stay in as much contact as we can with with sending um, back and forth, make sure that you all aren't are okay. Um, if you need our help, that, that we we can leave and, and offer it. Um, maybe uh, do do we plan on returning here? I guess so. I don't know. I don't know how long we'll be. But um, my memory fails me in my old age. How long is this going to extend our stay by? Were we actually shown the location yeah, yet? Do, or do we know we... how long was it supposed to be of a delay? Um, I would say that you guys could be told, like, it, expect it to be about a week, like, minimum-ish. Like, I don't know, but not not a sm- necessarily small amount. Like, it's not just a few-day foray into the jungle. So, so, like, a week there and then a week you were, back. You guys, you guys were told, you guys were told that the, the K, like, this, the, these, these cultists went back to the coast. And you know the coast is about a like bare minimum like five ish day travel, maybe a bit lower, but probably close to five days. So we um, could be looking minimum. at you know ten, twelve days before we make it back to where we left the rafts. And that's yeah, and that's if nothing else, you know, if if you if nothing else comes up as part of this investigation into the kidnappers. Right. Uh, but Joyce might say, um, maybe we'll just, I'll, I'll let him know that to to stay in port until we ask him to come. I can't ima- I imagine his journey to the mouth of the river will be quicker than any journey we have back up the coast. Or back up the river. True, it was, what, six days down the river? Seven days, I believe. Um, but yeah, it was about four days, four or five days to get back to the uh, to Port Nianzaru. I can't remember. Was there a current in the river? It's very. I mean, yeah, because you know rivers have currents um, and flow. So we would have uh, been going very, against the current. It's, it's very. It's, river, ne- right? it's It's mechanically negligible. Okay. Um, they're very fat, slow, uh, slow moving rivers. Okay, that's a little, you know shaming of them but okay well <laughs> i didn't write the module <laughs> um 
Okay, so Joyce will basically handle the communication with Sanjarsh then. Yeah, and if if necessary, you know, this is I'm not gonna like role play out Joyce, you know, sending messages. No, we wanna listen to does. you have a conversation with yourself for a while. <laughs> well, she'd send it to one of you guys. Um but like if if Nest like if if it's like, oh, we need to make sure they that the that Mora and Joyce hear about X thing, we can, you know, play that out. Otherwise otherwise assume she checks in and everything's okay. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Right. Um, and I think like she'll she'll handle but I, well yeah, I forget that Alu also has sending. That's right. Uh, so I also have sending. That's right, because clear or send message yeah. or whatever the spell is. <laughs> sending's the the big one. Message is sending the is the big one. Okay, message is the other one. Okay. Yeah. We all have sending. We're all secretly wizards. Yeah. Except Katep, he's just sitting here like, "Can everyone do this? Am I the only? Am I the only one?" <laughs> he's, like, he's like shouting really hard. It's like, so how are you guys gonna go far? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Garrick tells you all that in the morning he can uh, he can uh, assist you all in, or some of you at least, uh, whoever wants to attempt the climb up to the top of the cliffside uh, to get a better vantage point on the surroundings. Uh, he can point out good spots, good looking spots, or well, like okay. where to go, uh, more or less. Um, all right, yeah, we and we can pass forward to that if if nothing else comes over, uh, comes from the night or the morning conversations. Um, Eric would kind of give a look over and like look at Alua and comment. It's a difficult climb. There's no path up to the top of the cliffside. It's not necessary, but it can getting a broader view could serve well. Then, like, nonsense. Like... <laughs> he, he looks very unimpressed. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Getting up here was not easy. He definitely doesn't look sympathetic or anything like that. He's just, like, crossed his arms, you know, listening to you all, seeing if there's any volunteers to travel up. Uh, sure, Ktep will try to make the climb. Why not? I thought that was I thought that was a thing that Lua was going to do too. No. Yeah. Honestly, um, there's no like like serious challenge here, right? Like like I'm not going to make you guys roll for it or anything like that. It takes some time, a number of hours, um, to scale the cliff, but you know, even Alua is fairly dexterous and and determined, if nothing else. Um, with the assistance of the more athletic uh, members of the group, you guys can scale up to the uh, uh, to the top of the mesa. The very top isn't as flat as you guys might have expected. Uh, it's broken by uh, crags and and rifts, and it's just a very like jagged uh, surface area you couldn't like host a civilization on top of this place uh, but it does give a great view to the surrounding area you can see out um you know far out across the jungle as far east as the coastline in the very distance about uh 80 ish miles away um uh you can see off to the southeast in the uh the 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 uh rock structure that Kirs the Ball is built into is very much like like the only meaningful elevation in dozens and dozens and dozens of miles. The uh, mountain, the, the elevation kind of slowly lifts up to the south and southwest um, as they you know, reach towards the distant mountains that way. Um, but the the area that it's the, the cliff is built in, or the, uh, the formation is built in, kind of sits at the end of one, this large basin, and you can see that the uh, the basin like stretches out into this like murky swamp land uh, that's just filled with like decrepit trees and like a like a haze that lingers over the uh, the environment. Um, 
you guys can pick out like bleach white bones like that must be massive to be seen from this distance in the marshland um like some like rocky formations patches of like larger like you know like small lakes things like that uh but otherwise there's nothing necessarily notably interesting to look at other than you know it's a fucking rainforest and rainforests are dope um he kind of indicates off to uh, the the southeast of the location's been marked on your all's map um he's explained that uh in the past that there was a a failed settlement off along the uh along refugee refugee uh bay but that the house that he followed these cultists to uh was a little bit north of that uh, by a few miles he's not great with like like distances right because he's a fucking he can fly um so a lot of this is like communicated it's like oh it's a little ways north of of this and he's you know um he explains that the swamp is definitely dangerous but might be a little bit quicker to go through it to reach this place um he doesn't talk about who about the people who were kidnapped. Um, I believe you guys received a bit of information on that last session, but he's just like he's not offering any further information on that. He's just giving you guys like there were uh, once he gets to the top and points it out and describes the the building. It's just this ramshackle two story building. I saw them enter and watched for as long as I could, but there's. A guardian beast in the region, uh, a winged creature with the guise of a lion, uh, and I dared not challenge such a beast. Uh, there were eight of them who left Kirsabal. Uh, they seemed like known. They seemed like adventurers that we have hosted. But their hearts didn't have the peace in them that you all do. A piece of what? <laughs> um, I make sure I have what he said correct. Is he said it's dangerous to go through the swamp, which is south. However, it's it would be faster. And where he said he stayed was north of Refuge Bay. Uh, it's marked on the the location. There's like a or it should be. Do you guys see the pirate cave? Question mark. Yes, that's not north of. The... Uh, Sorry, no, no, no. It's it's north. There's like a a settlement uh, along the coast of Refugee Bay, um, and the mm -hmm. the house that they went to was north of this oh, ruined settlement. Ish, wait. Okay. The settlement's not marked on the map. It's it's. Oh oh oh. Effectively, okay. Okay. it's yeah, yeah. effectively inconsequential. Gotcha. Um, that's exactly what he wants us to think. Right. Dun, dun, dun. Gotcha. Very unassuming looking. <laughs> this is weird. Gotcha. Because like I can see it on my screen, but I can't see it on the camera. So I was like, hmm. Weird. Gotcha. Yeah, that's okay. Um, all right, cool. So, and then uh, not entirely. It takes a week to get there and a week to come back. Um, so uh, traveling on the hex map. If you travel at a normal pace, you can travel one hex per day. Um, if you travel at a fast pace, you can travel up to two paces. It's literally just RNG if you go two pace, two squares or not, a 50-50 chance. Um, I believe I looked at it. It would take four and a half days moving at a fast pace, okay. um, which translates to nine tiles. So nine days if you just travel at a normal pace. Okay. Um, and that's cutting through the swamp slightly you could extend that by another day or a few days if you fully circumnavigate the swamp um just a little bit longer if you if you go around it okay so four aarakocca also four aarakocca from last week were taken one was an old elder and three were young ones according to uh birdie bird lady ladybird Sorry, three elder and one young one, or one elder and three young ones? One elder and three young ones. 
Including Garrick's daughter, I want to say? Yeah, Garrick's daughter was supposedly young. So she's accounted for one, the, one of the three young, younger Air Kokra Younglings. and one elder. The youngling. Yunkra. Young Kokra? Air Kokra? Fair, we'll workshop this. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and okay. again, he doesn't. He doesn't talk about the 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 people yes. who are missing it. Um, though some of you guys, especially Sven, I think, has a very high insight. You definitely yes. see that, like you know, like he, like the way he like stares off in that distance and such, and just the general way he talks about it. It's clear that he, like, a meaningful part of him wants to go with this, um, and that like he's feeling like that pain and anger of loss. Um, he also hasn't told you guys well he would he would share that it um that the group uh came about 20 days ago stayed for a couple of nights and then left suddenly um, which one what the the kidnappers okay uh so it's been about 18 days since this group was kidnapped What would you guys like to do? Any preparation you guys would like? Any any questions you'd like to ask either of Garrick or other Aarakocran in the monastery? Um, you mentioned Garrick doesn't particularly, but do they have any kind of like more detailed maps of the area? Um, any any inquiry, about? they do not have uh, any maps. They could... Um, any Any information they could provide would just confirm what you guys see on this map. Right. Okay. Um, they don't have any like shortcuts or or notable um, uh, landmarks, anything like that. Uh, they would share that the name of this swamp is the Nisai Waste, which I will add to the map here. Nisai. Okay. Um. In terms of gear, did we even bring shit like tents and stuff? I mean, we were fully we relying on the hut. No, I mean I. I have like a bedroll and stuff in my kit. But okay, so we don't need to like get them to equip us with stuff. Uh, tents would not be a bad idea. It does rain fairly frequently, and sleeping out in the rain can have consequences. Okay, so we do not mm -hmm. have. I thought we could make uh, uh, huts in quo out of our um, rafts. Oh, Our rafts are back by the river. <laughs> the canoes that are at the river. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, well, I thought we were needed to get need to take them in order to walk through oh, the forest. The, through go through that. the not through the forest, no, through the swamp or something. You guys didn't have any inclination. the The swamp is isn't like navigable by these canoes. It's, oh, okay. Know. I was. Th I'm thinking like. <laughs> yeah, these right. canoes are like Louisiana. sixty foot long. Yeah, these canoes. We just like have to carry them for a day. Yeah, these canoes are like 50 to 60 feet long. These are okay. river transport canoes. Okay, no problem. Just getting all that in my brain. Uh, so do they have like gear like that we can yoink, whether purchase or borrow? Um, yeah, they would have, have uh, stuff like that. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I think they could, they could at least provide uh, if, if it was mentioned. You know, like the night before when you guys were planning things over um one of them might uh kind of offer oh we'll go look around see what we can have um and kind of scrounge up functional but very unelegant tents for everybody yeah um, we like for the most part just need something to keep the rain off our backs and like we'll, we'll survive otherwise yeah and uh and you know salida has a tent certainly well i guess she is coming with eh? Presumably, we can just uh, hook up a tent to to uh, he who must not be named. Yeah, uh, that couldn't go bad at all. And to anchor it to a, to a triceratops. <laughs> uh, Bruno just sees a flower, goes yeah. to eat it at late at night. One person suddenly out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, with that, is there any other preparations we need to do before we meander? Oh, uh, I think, is it, 
I know he gave us only a couple of things. I know they don't really um, walk, obviously. But is there any information anyone can give us, like that really nice girl, Aarakocra? Yeah. Whatever her name was. I forgot. I just made it up on the spot and forgot to write it down because I'm bad at doing that. About doing so that. Yeah. I, we know me and names. Um, that could give us, like, mm, information of what we would find or look out for uh maybe local um, local flora <laughs> um probably not really they yeah they they have you know they tend to circumnavigate most threats that you guys would face on the jungle or swamp floor um okay. yeah if you if you inquire you know you'd get like the list of like you know it's like oh well, fucking watch out for the dinosaurs and like the undead and everything like that like they, okay, they're certainly aware success. of them but any anything that would like provide any like meaningful like preparation now nah, they don't really have that um, okay, okay cool that's that's good to know um then side thing for lua since she's trying to learn herbalism stuff um mm -hmm. is there anything around in here that she's able to like oh hey could i purchase that beautiful flower that was eaten no they, they live a very utilitarian life like they they hunt for most of their uh their food they hunt in the jungles nearby um nothing that would no, no fairy nothing steps. that would yeah nothing yeah no nothing that would be uh of a quantity necessary uh, okay to gain anything here they have nothing okay they they um, live very very spartan lifestyles Okay, well, I wasn't sure because, like, you know, having mm -hmm. that on the sure. like cure wounds and stuff, that stuff's great. I right, then she'll just keep her eyes open during the hike, I suppose. Now you could have attempted to brew a potion, um, overnight, or you know, even staying, not going up up the cliff face if you wanted to have more time to potentially brew. Yeah, uh, I'll do that. Anything? Yeah, you know, she would have done the cliff face because she has okay. something to prove to herself i guess um and then post would you try kind of overnight to do the two hour yeah uh thing All right, then uh go ahead and make a um a herbalism check wisdom plus proficiency what's her wisdom should... it's three let me yeah. pull back up the uh the compendium because i forgot to open it Let me know what you get. Again? Oh no! This is my third time rolling fail. Oh. Um. I don't, anybody want to help I don't her? Agree with this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I can do. I don't think I'm moving. Uh, Katab's not proficient in anything that would help yeah. this. It's okay. It's okay. What about, what about, She's learning. What about Oren? Any, any want to like stay up and like watch your sister? <laughs> Fail piss? No, maybe he's just like watching. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's watching, maybe he's watching and he 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 is you know pretty smart. I'd I'd let I'd say he could help. Probably not normally, but man, I really want you to succeed. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just it's it's only her second time. She's learning um, how to do this. I will take this defeat. She, um. She so I think um we'll say that uh that this this manifest as uh. You know, last time it was like, oh shit, the fire's not hot enough, like at all. Um, uh, this time to, it's too hot. Well, we'll say it we'll say so that crisp. we'll say that overnight. Um, they still, you know, um, the, these air cochran they they don't have like the normal like boundaries of like personal space necessarily. And towards the evening, um, as like smoke starts to like drift out of the chimney of this building you're you're in, um, uh, uh, the young air cochran uh, uh, scout uh, that had talked to you guys before kind of makes her way into the building like eager to like see what's going on you kind of kept strike up a conversation um, and I'll, I'll supply that over the night she uh, gives a very basic uh, amount like like she, she's eager to, to like the hopes that maybe these these four who were kidnapped um can be found um she has that like maybe bit of night na na i can't ever say that na word te. sure um <laughs> optimism of youth 
Um, optimism, yeah, that works too. And it seems to be like, uh, like you know, the older Eric Cochran who who talked about the ones who were kidnapped just don't share. Um, talks about like the three of them who are her friends that she played with and stuff. Um, they, she was older than them by five to six years, um, but she'll give the names of them. Uh, this would also include brief descriptions, but I was a bit scrambling and I don't have that. But you have a. Let me just drag this on your character sheet. That's how I was going to do it. That's right. Oh, my character sheet? Okay. Yeah, I'll give you a small uh, uh, an item with the names on them. Um, <laughs> that a little, uh... Okay. Uh, and it's kind of like like you get caught up in the conversation and then, it's like, shit, oh shit, it's burning. Like you have to to stumble to like. Be like shit stop it stop it um do you want to try continuing past the two two hours that you get without any consequence you could easily just sleep in the next day a little bit um, um to counteract that if you like um but... just playing devil's advocate she does still have a level of exhaustion from the climb up <laughs> yeah that Don't that she's it. sleeping that she has to sleep off that's fair. Oh, yeah. true. So you would have actually had to go disadvantage on your nap. One <laughs> well, on your <laughs> check. <laughs> Let me roll again because I'm curious. Will I get another one? No. One no, this will be 20. this will be your nat twenty. Don't do it. This will be your nat twenty. Don't do it. Don't jinx it. No, it's eleven. <laughs> no. Okay. 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 Eleven I mean, would not have quite been high enough. I don't think. I think it's a thirteen. DC. <laughs> yeah, she. I, I, th I don't think she would because she was tired. Also, mm -hmm. that you know, a little discouraged, but she just will sleep it off. <laughs> But I like to think she tried to do everything perfectly, but it just didn't turn out right and exploded in her face. And she has, yeah. like, you know, soot on her face. It's like, ah. Well, you have, really one more you have one more try uh, before the materials are ruined. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> so maybe we'll hold off the exploding in her face for that. But I will say, like, maybe uh, yeah. maybe this Air Cochran girl is like, is it supposed to smell so burnt? And I was like, oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> Scramble yeah. it to spit. Um, but the attempt itself is ruined. Uh, nothing is produced. All right. Um, and they you don't have... have like anything to replenish here, right? There's nothing. They no. Just, like... no. You'd have to. You'd have to descend down. Like they. Like every single day, they head out into the uh, into the jungle mm -hmm. to like hunt and, and collect things, yeah, fruits and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to teach them how to do... dry, dry herbs and flowers and stuff. Hang mm -hmm. it upside down. They have stuff like that, but it's like food stuff. It's not <laughs> we can make potions and, and stuff out of. Um, okay. Like, yeah, like there'd be like little like herb gardens and stuff on some in some of the houses, but like on the, the windows, but yeah, nothing, nothing that would provide uh, components for potion craft uh all right yeah uh, anything else you guys want to handle in curious or just you guys head up in the morning uh take a look around hope it takes about two hours effectively like no quote-unquote time lost i'll say just because it's describing everything um you guys want to discuss how you want to approach getting to the uh the coast if you want to attempt the swamp uh the more direct swamp route or navigate around it in the still very dangerous jungle. So then's what would be for through the swamp, but he might think and then look over to Alua and said, Hmm, perhaps the long way might be the less exertive way. Well, by this point, she wouldn't have exhaustion anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah, but implying that if she's prone to exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at her. Taking it oh. a, a little slower but a little less. Sure. Haggard. I think Oren would stick up for her and say if she could make it. Yeah, uh, she he'll, she'll look over and be like, "Well, I have been working out. It's it just takes a little <laughs> longer. It takes 4 weeks to actually see results, okay? And we're going about that 4 weeks. I think I got this." <laughs> If, that, if that's the way we decided to go, or I think Alua would be okay. But what we have to yeah. So yeah. Sven was just the most direct route. We can push through the swamp and this will. Well, can we? And if you guys have said, yeah, we can, then unless Katep says otherwise, uh, I've got no problems trying to cut through the swamp if we're trying to be quick. Uh, 
Like when we meet back up with Sabra and Salida, if she recommends against venturing into the swamp, I reckon she knows the area better. Otherwise, mm. it's, speed it seems like it would be to our benefit i suppose our large four-legged friend may not fare so well in a swampy environment perhaps the forest might be better suited in the end we will consult the uh, the others also I think that is wise uh, there's undead things in the swamp correct more so a sluggish land creature might not fare well in the murky shallows. I I expect Salida may know best. Um, Perhaps Orin, we should for, confer with her. Just for fun, Orin, go ahead and make a nature check. And if anybody else is proficient in nature, you can make one as well. Could I do survival? No, this is, a, this is, a, this is some information about uh, Bruno that you might have picked up on. 17. Seems pretty good. Uh, uh, be able to make a one. Thirteen. God, nice. Plus seven. Oh, um, so smart. You know this. This so actually smart. checks out. I was. I'd set the DC at about fifteen for this. Um, the the triceratops might actually be able to handle it pretty well. Um, like certain parts of swamps are like you know the difficulty in moving through the muck and such, whereas this you know four legged, strong as fuck triceratops might actually be able to just like ignore a lot of that um certainly doesn't you would you you know there would be circumstances you would expect that he might not be as good at but i wouldn't say there's like any inherent like oh yeah don't take a triceratops in a swamp kind of like vibe uh, about the the beast's abilities um just you know food for thought uh well, unsurprising that Sven's yeah. aid intelligence leads him to yeah, exactly regurgitate yeah, so mis misleading information yeah, yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. things he doesn't know about. So the role, the role of support what you said. Um. Um, cool. Okay. Well, so, yeah. So I, I guess the plan is we'll we'll propose cutting through the swamp for the most direct route, but see what Salida says. Yeah. Okay. As you guys want to guide? You guys want to head back down and reconvene with? Um... I, I think so. Yeah. All right. Down in the um, uh, the descent is isn't you know notably difficult. Um, no checks required. Things like that it takes about an hour to descend. Um, I guess we'll say by this point it's about noon. Um, as you are reconvening uh, with the the pair of women, we're back at camp. Uh, they relay that it was an uneventful night for them. Uh, Bruno is pretty antsy. He's kind of like stomping around. You kind of hear him. He kind of like gives like a little like miniature like like faux charge towards you guys as you guys are arriving. Where you know Cyrus like Bruno, stop playing around. Uh, oh, um, would we just hold her arms out, Bruno, and just he, give him all the scratches. Okay, yeah, he he does stop. He follows Cyrus' command, but yeah, you come up and you know, act as if this isn't a, a murder beast. No, uh, for for the moment. Um, Salida is definitely like she's like head through the Nisei the Nisei ways. I mean, I guess I've heard that you know people have entered there and left and returned with stories, but it's filled with poisonous plants, uh, dangerous environments, everything you would expect of a swamp. Um, sure, though, I mean. I'm sure I'm confident we could navigate, especially with this at our back and kind of uh, thumbs, uh, finger at uh, at uh, Kirsabal, uh, which will, again, for a while, help prevent you guys from getting lost, since, you know... It's a massive landmark. Yeah, it's a massive landmark that you're moving directly away from. Um, so she kind of, you know, she doesn't... She just, she's cautious about the idea, but she doesn't, like you know, openly say, yeah, fuck this or anything like that. Um, yeah. She doesn't seem too excited about the idea of, like, elongating the stay, by the way, but she goes with it. She's like, as long as you will pay me, I'll try to keep a running tally. Um, go ahead, uh, Katap, sorry. 
Oh, I was just going to say, as long as she's not like, oh, we don't go in there, you know, the terrible dire leeches <laughs> infest or the dire hydro leeches, you know. Ooh, write that down, write that down. <laughs> wait, 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 I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Zombie leeches. You guys share that plan and Salida just offers. Do we want to push ourselves hard each day or... What sort of pace should we try to set through the through the swamp? Normal. Should pace we set a pace. fast, a normal, or a slow pace? In fact, a normal pace. I think a normal pace. I'm... Let's not be too hasty, but let's not let our guard down. Good. We'll remind you all that you know you're looking to nearly double your the time spent if you never. Uh, take a quick pace like you could in theory be in and out of the swamp in one day well why would we have done the math that way no that doesn't make sense you there are um you know small penalties to moving fast like you're more likely to be ambushed and you can't perform any other activities like gathering plants or... you can only gather plants if you go slow uh, normal right. pace doesn't allow for that either um, but uh, it's just, you know, just want to make sure that you understand, like, that you will be spending multiple days in the swamp if you take a normal pace, whereas you might not be if you take a fast one. Right, so do we want to blitz the swamp, or do we want to carefully go through the swamp and then blitz the jungle? Either. Or, or, you know, nothing wrong with taking, you know, your time. Either. That sounds like a loaded statement from the DM with plenty let me, of let me monsters this. that he's waiting let to me, throw at let us. Me <laughs> let, me, let me supply this. There's no increased chance of random encounters based off of your pace. It's just maybe the the, the nature of that. Like, you know, a monster is more likely to have the drop off if you go fast versus go slow, etc. If you go slow, you can move stealthily and potentially avoid an encounter. Uh, then what vote would be but, to yeah. travel as quickly as possible without giving up any safety, right? Okay. Um, but what what do you guys think, I guess? I'm fine blitzing at least a portion of the swamp. At least Alua is. Sure. I think Salida would kind of you know she's she's the guy she's not trying to like force anything but she might voice up getting through the swamp as quickly as possible seems like a wise idea but she doesn't get a vote uh yeah katef would be fine with trying to get past the swamp just because camping in the swamp sounds actually terrible not great Okay. okay, I think I think that seems like people cool. want to just try to blitz the swamp uh, on the first. We'll say we'll say it's the first day. I'll give you guys like uh, you know the half movement into an actual tile from where Kirsabal is. Uh, we'll see you guys start there. Um. Okay. Um. Then if uh, somebody wants to go ahead and roll a d20 and then if you can make a survival check this is just to kind of like avoid certain uh disasters along with uh Salih as the two navigators 17 um, for Katev. sorry you said survival check yeah just a survival check come on hey 25 hey. yeah and Salida rolled pretty well too but not anywhere close to that well um, so you're able to, like, like, so, um, uh, Katap, if you want to go ahead and roll a d4. A what? A d4. Oh god, how many hydras are showing up? Let me, uh, know what you get. Uh, that would be a three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so as you guys proceed through, uh, so then you're handling the, you know, Salid is a little bit more deferring to you uh, through this first leg. You're kind of spotting out the, uh, there, you know, there's no pathways through this swamp. It's a lot of, like, moving, avoiding, like, you know, areas you might get bogged down in, studying the, like, the plants and the, the, the contours of the hills and things like that to avoid any 
uh, particularly disastrous encounters. Um, you guys proceed through. Um, yeah, I guess this hex. Um, but as you guys uh, are, are walking through, you get to a point where there's this, like, like most of this is like, you know, some forest cover, right? It's just different sort of forest cover, rotting trees or trees that thrive in this, this ultra humid, watery uh, environment. Um, but you reach a point suddenly where the tree line breaks and you see ahead of you all this like large murky lake, uh, more or less. Uh, looking at it, it's it's wide enough to where if you were like it's it's that like kind of like gross lake to like very much swamp lake where you it doesn't necessarily look deep, but it looks muddy and hazardous to just just travel across. Uh, and there's a, a moment of like, fuck, what the fuck? Like you weren't really able to see this from the uh, the vantage point of Kirsa Ball and like looking to either side the the expanse goes wide enough to where it would be a very significant detour to have um but the opportunity to not move around it is very plainly visible to all of you all as a uh, a wooden bridge um like made of planks and like rope handles stretches in like a zigzag pattern across this um about four mile uh, well you can't see four miles um you know actually four, well, four, four miles a huge lake about a uh like a, it's a normal size big lake i don't know half a mile wide uh lake but, like you can see the other side um like we're talking like this, football field we talk no like, like like about i would say like about oh yeah okay okay That's reasonable um so I, a very large pond yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like very significant thing. But yeah, like there's like a wooden, wooden bridge, um, not too far away from you guys where you guys are at. Um, from a distance, um, looks reasonably sturdy. Like it's not obviously rotting. Um, it's Nick. It's pretty, you know, pretty wide. Like, a couple humans could walk abreast of each other. Um, does it uh, does it look sturdy it. enough for say a triceratops? You'd probably have to actually get close to it to investigate that. Um, if you guys want to approach it, it like the, the it, like it's like you know a hundred yards off to one side to actually get to the where it seems to to begin. Um, if you'd like to, otherwise, I guess you could make a probably an investigation check to see like judge like how much weight something could handle and i'd say from a distance it'd be a disadvantage could could we assist can we be like yeah or whoever katep maybe not the best at judging these things so maybe he could help no. somebody yeah katep's probably just like who builds a bridge out in the middle of wait but and he's just kind of looking around for other signs of like civilization and i assume he just doesn't see it. <laughs> salida you can make a perception check on that base salida offers the information uh these are called the nasai ways because in an ancient time some warlord named nasai had a kingdom here it's strange that this exists but i'm sure there's societies goblins maybe i don't know that build these things uh you don't you don't see anything though no. Does it look like there's any signs of maintenance at all, or is it? Um, or do you guys want to approach it, like approach the foot, I... foot the foot area? Otherwise, I would say it's investigation at disadvantage I... to study the bridge. I think I would say a perception check for for maintenance, though you could do that. Yeah, just straight he just like wants check. to see, like you know, is there like rope that's been you know not soggy and been there for decades, or is there yeah. you know like yeah. can uh, a little assist? So uh, perception yeah, you could, disadvantage. You, you could make that yourself, and you have advantage on perception checks uh, that rely on sight because of your lantern, Lua. Okay. Uh, no, just a straight perception check uh, for this. If you wanted to like see like how safe it might be to travel on, I'd say that's an investigation check. But this is just looking at. I'm gonna perception. I'm gonna guide myself. Twenty-three. Oh, it's a nat nice. fucking twenty. Um. Okay, with a nat twenty, I'll say it doesn't look like like brand spanking right um 27 is pretty fucking good alua you can kind of confirm this 
Thank you. <laughs> Let's be honest. Oh, the DC is 27, changed, so you know I had to be. That beat changed it. everything. <laughs> um, Alu, you'll be able to like kind of confirm all this information more or less um, uh, with a 23 as well. But um, 28, you you can tell it's it's some like some years old. There does look to be um, some levels of disrepair, but maybe not as much as you would expect. Um, there are places where the ropes have been replaced. But don't look brand new. Um, you know, they're, they're like you would gauge from a distance that this is a reasonable. Like it's it's very reasonable to think that you could cross this area if the state of the bridge continues all the way, and it does continue as far as you can see. Like again, you can see the bridge moving across this uh, swampy, watery uh, uh, top of lake whatever that's called um surface there we go surface um and you have no reason to think that it doesn't like that that there's you don't see any like large gaps or clear obvious um breaks um you do see uh kind of into like the you know somewhat murky uh uh vision you see like um these like small orange um lights occasionally like blinking in the lake area um with that role you see that like they're like they're, they kind of look almost menacing ish like it's like that like fiery orange glow but they actually are just like you see one of them kind of suddenly like hop over a little bit and you're like oh it's fucking like frogs or toads or something like that um with like oh, these like dope dope lights on their back um mm. And about about halfway across the bridge, um, you know, pretty hard to see. You see, um, like this, like small, like crackle of something, like slightly, like electrical, like just like a, um, the kind of like is just slightly off to the side of the bridge, or maybe on it, but it's hundreds of yards away. Um, Bridge itself looks pretty, pretty okay. How long is the bridge again? Hmm, sorry. How, how long did you say the bridge was? You said it was. It's about entire... half a mile. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it like crosses across the feet. entire span. Does it like go it like? Sex. It's it's, it... very, it's somewhat in the middle. Like somebody built this to be able to cross a line across the lake. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, it'd be it probably it'd be a you know, many, many, many hour track to circumnavigate this. And we think thing. it should be able to support Bruno. Yeah, I would say. There's no reason to think that maybe, like, you know, you might... There's no reason to think that it... Okay. Well, I guess, shall we? But again, yeah. you guys also haven't approached the bridge itself. You're still about 100 yards from the bridge. Um, so this is purely based off okay. of what Well, given that we think it can, I think... Then we'll approach the bridge. Sure, sure, sure. I'll say, based off that role and you know the intelligence of the party and such, you can you, you, you can sense. well, like the 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 group's effort, looking you yeah. know, pausing to like be like, all right, does it really look as good? Yeah, like the woods <laughs> slightly, the rot them. <laughs> slightly rotting. Um, I think Orin, Orin's pretty fucking sharp. And really good at nature you recognize uh with your passive nature score that your that this uh the wood here is like this really good hardwood that's been like treated maybe in some way i'm like whoever made this knew what they were doing interesting um, yeah okay i mean definitely know it wasn't there at kokra because they have no need of a bridge and sorry salita mentioned goblins like maybe occupying the area does this seem like goblin handiwork Ooh, that'd be a what sort of check would that be? I'll say that's just a straight intelligence check, I would say, from anybody. Oh. Could um, I do like a history maybe? Um no, I think this is studying handiwork. Okay. Um it doesn't that's fall fair. like it'd Oh be yeah, like architecture a, check. <laughs> yeah, like like a okay. mason or a carpenter's tools if but I don't think anybody's I'm gonna guide myself. Is is Orin oh proficient in carpentry? No. All right, 17. 
It's Alex frozen. Alex? Yep, oh yeah, we frozen. lost him. We lost the DM. The DM has been lost. We must find him. Unless it's cat. Yeah, it became we'll DC. That's good. A good roll. Yeah, I was yeah. For someone with minus one on int modifier, <laughs> take a sixteen. We lost an Alex. Did you say I could do one as well? Because I think so. Is... Yeah. Yeah. Orin will head towards like learning carpentry, masonry, and engineering. He kind of had started that back, like when we first got to the mansion and stuff. Like he was yeah. helping the mm -hmm. people. Oh yeah, you're you're helping the crew do construction for. Oh uh, yeah, you were. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, we got a nice discount. Which was very handy in the long run. It was us being notoriously short on money. Yes. <laughs> we did take a rest as well, right? Or no? Yes, we did. This yeah. is a new day. Did not click that button. Did we do anything the day before? The climb. Oh, right. No. Well, I don't. I don't. I did lose something. Okay. Oh, 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 well. oh, and he's gone. Yep. What does he say in the chat? Uh oh, internet. All right, guys, I will step in. This is going to be Alua's campaign now. <laughs> I'm in yeah. danger. I'm getting Tiny <laughs> Tina's vibes from Alua. Hell yeah. <laughs> it would be that chaotic. <laughs> okay, now, everybody, you reach over there and you get to the bridge. And then it starts glowing. And those little frogs that you thought were going to be harmless are actually these enormous things that go burp, burp, and they spark Alex? fire welcome back hello oh, hi. hello welcome back, welcome uh, back. i took over for a little bit hope you don't mind um we have giant frogs that spout fire at you accurate yeah hopefully everything's okay seem to just to be a you sound fine yeah you sound fine. a flicker it's storming so i'm sure it's related mm. to that but we have a good internet infrastructure we'll pretend that nothing bad happened and just continue um okay. you rolled a uh, uh 16 to check um from That's what fun. you under uh sure. so from what you understand of like goblin noid this seems a little bit maybe more like well done than you would expect um hmm. from like goblins that tend to have a very rudimentary like could be but you don't think so yeah, I think Sven to like offhandedly to Orin or maybe Selena might just like, you know, mention that like, this is fine handiwork for goblinoids. That's suspicious. Best be on our guard. Why did I say guard like that? <laughs> guard! <laughs> Best be on our guard. It's because he's been out to sea for so long. Yeah. I. I may best be on our guard. <laughs> um, then with that preface, could Alua make sure that she keeps, like, watch? And, and maybe is it okay um, if she, like, gets on Bruno? Um, she no. <laughs> she doesn't weigh a lot. Has, Probably. Has I Sabra think Sabra, trained Sabra Bruno would... for riding it? Uh, she has. Um, she doesn't typically... Uh, ride him like all the time um but do you do, does alua ask oh she Sabra? absolutely will ask yeah, she's like um she, like I, so... i'm really not sure that that's a great idea he's still getting somewhat used to me and i wouldn't want you to get hurt from it uh he's there's a lot of pent-up energy in this guy all right I should just be very, watch be very easy to, to slip off and get trampled under underfoot. Um, 
yeah, you can certainly keep keep watch. Um, any any way you guys want to proceed? Uh, right now, there's no no signs of danger. No, you don't hear or see anything around. Uh, do you guys head a you know want to take the the bridge route? Yeah, I think Sven would take the lead and say, like perhaps indicate for Bruno to go next, and then Warren and Contep can take the rear. Okay, sure. There's enough space here. It's about like ten-ish feet wide. So, like people could push past each other. Well, we'll say not quite Maybe not 10, Bruno, but... Uh, but like eight feet. You know what I mean? Like like carefully, you guys could. Actually, how wide is Bruno? Do we? Um, I have this image of being anything. like car-sized, but that could be wrong. More or less, I think. Yeah, pretty pretty close to that. Um, so like like you could carefully, you know, get around him. You yeah, know? you could squeeze by. Him. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay, you guys head across. Um, you guys begin to head across without any, any apparent issue. Um, as you guys are walking along, you do see um, you know those the glowing orange of the toads out here on the lake, just hippity hopping around, just, you know, ribbit, ribbit, these like phosphorus orange uh, patches on their back. Um, you'll also see... Uh, uh, as you guys are are closing the distance, that like little signs of like crackling electricity, uh, Sven coalesces into this period where it looks, looks somewhat like the the swamp water has defying like natural physics and such. There's a period where like the swamp water like rises out and envelops the uh, the bridge in about a ten foot section, and around that area, there's just these little like like flashes of like miniature little like like just a of lightning um just crisscrossing back and forth this like region uh every so often like like it's like swells out of the water to to make this uh, small patch of of strange liquidy charged water Sound good. What would you guys like to do? Whoa, hustle, hustle. It's just like like stagnant ahead of you guys. On the, the on the bridge ahead of you all. So the all water the water raised up enveloped the bridge as just staying there? Yep. Oh shit, hold on, let me let me check my um your guys, you can make it out from about a hundred feet away or so. Sorry, can you describe it again to me? The water raised up. And... Like it looks like a period where, like a like a, a about a ten foot ish section of the bridge. And the water directly around it has like swollen up, um, mm -hmm. almost like there's like a like think like a wave, but it's like almost stagnant, and it's just in this small area, and it like envelops the wooden planks of the bridge, um, just barely, and like there's little flashes of electricity that like crisscross the region. Um, how wide is the soccer field or a football field? Does anyone uh, know the number? Fifty-three in an eighth yard. So that's, third, that's the yard. length of the bridge, effectively, we're talking about? No, no. The bridge is about half a mile across. How many feet are in a mile? 5,000 some? 5,000? I think, right? Or is it 3,000? 3,500? 5,000 something. Okay. So this is only a 10-foot section? It's a 10-foot section of the bridge. Yes. The bridge is about, we'll we'll say, yeah, about eight feet wide, and it's just a small ten foot section of the bridge that you notice ahead of you is just like oddly enveloped by some. Uh, I, I guess Sven would turn to Salida and be like, "Any uh, any ideas?" Um, Salida just kind of looks at us like, "I don't, I don't, I don't want to touch it, but." Kind of continues to look at it for a few, like several seconds. It doesn't seem to be moving. Whatever it is, 
might just be I don't know something. Um, I'm is sure there? Could, I'm sure. I'm sure we could jump across it if necessary. And Bruno do a ten foot leap on a bridge like this. <laughs> uh, probably he could also probably hop into the into the murk and just paddle around it. Mm. The good swimmer. Could we throw a rock at it and just go through, or does it suck it up? Yeah, if we throw something on it, does it like zap it or anything? Do, is there any way to test that? Do we really? Like... A rock? No rocks Check. around. You're in the uh, middle of a bridge. No. Is there like no loose lake. branches or anything yeah, on the bridge? Something. Uh, yeah, sure. Or in the in the in the muck or in the swamp, is just like reach yeah. down and pull out like a like a weed in the swamp or something. Yeah, I mean, even if we drop a fish and chuck it at it, see what. Happens. Trying to throw it from a hundred feet away. Well, no, we'd get a little closer, I think. Okay, how close? How close do you want to get before you? I don't know. Try to What's throw a reasonable something? distance to throw things? Like, like twenty. Uh, yeah, like, like fifteen feet away, I guess. Well, probably maybe, like feet? like 30, Yeah. Thirty is that? Twenty maybe is a bit low, but. Yeah, we'll get closer, like, we'll, I think we'll slowly approach, and if we don't notice any changes, we'll try chucking something onto it to see what happens. Yeah, you, uh, like, you're just doing, like, a, like, a tree limb, just something small, just to see what the reaction is. Yeah, like, I'm thinking, like, a, a stick that's, like, roughly, I don't know, yeah. smaller than an arm, but still, Yeah, like... you, you throw it at it, like, um, the water gives, like, like, a wobble slightly, and, like, like a, like, it's, like, a, like, a, kind of, like, somewhat like a gel or something like that it's a gel like it doesn't like splash gel. kind of like it, it seems to have like it like like it ripples but it doesn't like splash like water but there's no other reaction to it oh, it's viscous of course yeah it's like v very viscousy liquid um, so there's a slight i would say maybe where the where the where it hits there's this slight like sputter of electricity that kind of like crackles off just slightly around it but nothing like so horrifying. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the the jolt cantrip I have says that it can only target a creature. If I try casting it at the water, does lightning jump from my fingers? Okay, it, you can only cast it as a at a creature as a mechanical thing in D anD. d <laughs> You can't just test. You can't. Are yeah, you, you a creature? Test, like, Are you yeah. a creature? <laughs> I, um, would, you like that, would you like to try that though? Would you like to try to cast jolt at this this blob of stuff? Sick. Save, save, save Jelly your thing. Life. Save it. it. It's it's a cantrip. Oh, okay. Never mind. Don't save it. What's the range on it? Is it a? Uh, it's thirty feet. Okay. Um, you know what? Um, I have. I guess it's a save. It at the same it's time. not an not an attack roll, right? Uh, it's a save. Yeah, like you you pass this bit of lightning. It kind of just splays out across, and not, there's no meaningful effect. Lua shoots out a left firebolt. You shoot out a firebolt? Yeah. At the bridge? No, um, at the water thingy. Okay. Okay. Um, does firebolt ignite on, like, wood? Does it say? I think emphatically it says it doesn't ignite. Okay. It ignite things, a, right? No, I think it does. If it isn't being, yeah, a flammable object hit by the spell ignites if it isn't being worn or carried. Um, though, because oh. we're in a swamp... And it's wet in yeah. water. Yeah, you you blast out this firebolt. I I won't make you roll. I don't know. Sure, Alua hits the first one. Whatever. Uh, I don't want to sit here and like make you guys, you know, potentially roll to fucking hit a blob of immobile uh, uh, gel. Um, just kind of hits and impacts and just kind of diffuses into nothingness. Seems safe Doesn't, to me. Like, like it's as if you'd shot water with a firebolt. No. I have one more solution, but I don't know if I want to use it. <laughs> let's just go. Let's just go up there. <laughs> but, like, if it hasn't responded to being shot with, you know, a, a firebolt, going to hope it's not just a really committed ooze to the to this bit and uh see if we can't get over it or around it yeah okay um yeah like like it's only 10 feet you could definitely can jump it who wants to 
make that attempt. I think Sven will try and make the attempt. Okay. Uh, so then you... Roll a little um, uh, kind of, you're, uh, I don't, I don't have, like, the jumping rules or anything like that. You can so you jump, kind of... you can long jump up to your strength score without needing to roll for it. So you're gonna oh, have 12. to... <laughs> gotcha. Uh, which I think is with the running start. Or that... Yeah, a yeah. ten foot running start. Then you uh, you gear up, kind of. You know, it's a bit difficult, Rex. Right, planks of wood, and they're not like like it's not like seams like seamless wood, right? Or, or like like right next to each other. The planks aren't are like you know an inch or two apart in places and a bit misaligned, things like that. But still, well, well made. No no difficulty in making. You just have to be a bit more careful than you would be running on pavement. Um, uh, but you run across, you run and you jump across this this crackle of lightning. Um, and what everybody else sees is a tendril of of this ooze just suddenly elongate into a pseudopod and whip upwards at Sven. This God, was very committed, was committed to the Sven. Very committed ooze. <laughs> um, one second, I have to pull up the freaking thing. I just had it and then I closed it because I'm silly. Um, does a uh, 18 hit? 18 is my armor class. Okay. Um, I'm gonna these, I'm gonna these, I'm gonna these, and one of these. Uh, so you take, like, it's this this pretty, like, substantial, like, arm of, of this ooze uh, lurches up and just slaps the shit out of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Damn. Then you take um, 21 points of bludgeoning damage. What the fuck? And I rolled the wrong thing, which is sad because I rolled max on that dice. It's a smaller dice that I'm supposed to roll. Uh, and three points of lightning damage. 21 and 3? 21 bludgeoning and 3 lightning damage. Okay. Um, and let me get people on this map. Uh, Sven's going to immediately drop to hybrid form. Okay. In response. I'm going um, to intentionally fail my check. As the foxfire ooze lurches into activity. And this hoe was committed to the bit. He sure was. Sure uh, how was. do I join the I need to add people oh, okay. to the map real fast. I, this was actually the map that I was uh, doing right before we started. One, I was like, shit, I need to upload this random this map. I need to upload this map. Um, you guys can adjust your all selves here. I think we'd said Bruno was close to the front of the group. Uh, yeah. I think that's what we said. Put Salida close to the back. Uh, how close did the rest of you guys want to stay to this thing? Do you guys, like, kind of get stay close-ish to where Sven was. Um, oh, give him... Paused. Oh, so, uh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. So, she would stay behind where everyone else is, so she'd be looking, like, around, so she'd probably be behind, But because when she did her firebolt, it was 120 feet. She had a, she had that space. Okay, we'll put you back here. Oh, I accidentally put two Sabros instead of a Salida. Um, all right. We'll say it's about, like, this to start. How does that look for everyone? Uh, I feel like they would be like I a think little a bit closer. Further. I think they think a bit farther away. If you had to have a ten foot jump run up, so they'd be yeah. Like but was it who? Someone was investigating it with me, weren't they? From a distance only, I believe. I don't believe anybody ever got closer than about thirty feet. Um, until the the run. Um, I think this this probably works. This gives you ten feet ahead. You would have been. You would have started your turn here, made a ten foot jump. And then leapt over it and have landed on the other side. Morphed as you land 
ooh, feeling that impact. Uh, and we can go ahead and roll initiative. Well, we've pattern is consistent of me getting the fucking shit slapped out of me. Or and Katep and Orin both have a one initiative. We're at the back. <laughs> like <laughs> so. <laughs> no. We're so shocked that these ooze just reached up and smacked you, like, spiked you back down into the bridge. We're just like, what the... F We're probably just looking at each other like, what the fuck was that? Which is really funny because the ooze rolled a fucking two. <laughs> La -mow. And no Mora to reroll our yeah. initiative. Oh, no. Uh, uh... We miss you, Mora. <laughs> um, oh, can I actually... Uh, can I Stone's Endurance the hit? You know what, I'm gonna say I'm no, because I'm gonna count this as a surprise. I know okay. you kind of were worried about it, but it's the weird situation where it, you weren't quite aware of what sort of threat this would be. Yep, so sure. you wouldn't have a reaction until your turn. Uh, okay, but we'll say fair. that was it. Um, you guys were aware enough to where it's not gonna get a full multi-attack on, on you guys. Um, you were spooked just enough, I'll say. I certainly got that one attack out of initiative. Um, and we will start. Salida rolled a fucking nat 20 on her initiative. I don't see Salida on there. Uh, oh, they're there. Go. Um, all right, yeah, and she'll... Um, fuck, from where she is, she she would have had her bow out, I think, most of the time. Uh, unknocked her, her short bow. Um... From where she is, though, um, I don't think she has a clear shot. I, I, she'll go ahead and take her attacks, but I'm going to give the, the ooze half... Actually, yeah, I'm going to give it half cover uh, because of fucking Bruno. Well, she doesn't have, uh, um, like, target missile? Target arrows? Sorry. Huh? Sorry, she needs to invest in target arrows. And and that's like, the arcane the archer. That's the Arcane Archer subclass. You can do it gotcha, twice gotcha, gotcha. for short rest. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, she does get two What are target arrows? Here. I don't remember what they're called. That's where you here. snipe. It's not. It's where you just like... It's like Magic Missile where it always hits. Um, a... I mean, it definitely hits. How, uh, half two. cover is plus two? Plus two. two. Okay. Yeah. I don't roll the next Three quarters is plus five, I believe. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that... 14 still hit. All righty. Four. Boop. And boop. Double check. Oh, don't do that. Uh, just straight up poison damage. All right. Um, the arrows impact this thing uh, from around Bruno. She's able to... I don't know how she fucking handles it. Probably should have given it three quarters cover, but still, I think I will say it was three quarters. They still both hit. Um... But Bruno is pretty chunky back there. I think he'll he'll provide three quarters cover to this kind of low to the ground, not mechanically prone, but hard to see creature. But Salida still manages to weave her her arrows in aside it. Uh, they impact. There's like little flashes of electricity, but like nothing like too crazy. Um, actually, okay, she shoots the first shot impacts it seems to be resistant to the non-magical arrow um takes the damage takes the poison damage that's 11 however in the aftermath of that that impact that that first arrow hits um there's this crackle of electricity that flashes out from the impact so then i need you to make a uh a dexterity saving throw oh god Okay, 15. 15 just fails. Oh, oh, damn. And you take an additional 7 points of lightning damage. Hachi machi. It crackles and like like lurches towards you. Um, you're oh, Actually, I'm, quick, quick clarification. What sort of armor are you wearing? Uh, I think I'm wearing leather. Are you? Are you wearing? I think I'm wearing studded medium. leather. It's medium armor. Studded uh, leather. I think all. I'm wearing medium. scale mail. Scale mail. Yeah. So it kind of the lightning lurches to the the metal of the scale mail, 
and zaps into you. You're unable to avoid it, uh, but it seemed to be potentially reaching for the metal that you're wearing. Uh, this lightning blast. Um, and after that impact, Salida goes, shit! She's like in the process of drawing her next arrow, and she pauses and says, what, what do I do? She's not sure if she should shoot this thing again and potentially release another lightning uh, burst. It went about, it went about, extended about 10 feet around the creature. Um... Did anybody want to call out to her to give her permission or tell her not to shoot? No, we'll just hold for a second. All right. Yeah, hold. I think like, Shit. Say hold. Shit. And she just kind of like pauses and looking around. Uh, and that'll be her turn. Ven, you are up. Okay, well, that changes what I was going to do on my turn. Uh, okay. I am going to. Oh, I can't cast two spells in one turn, right? Uh, correct. Shit. You can oh, as a reaction, plan. but not like if you use a if you use a bonus action to cast a spell, uh, you can only cast a cantrip as an action. Okay, I am going. Ooh. Can I like get through this at all, or is it fully blocking my way? Like I can't walk around unless I you would have to. Line? You would have to make an like a a, a jump. To do it, um, or get in the water. Yeah, the water is a uh, difficult terrain. Bare minimum mm. would expect that your movement would be high. Um, this island here, what's it's is, just what um, it? yeah, it's like like a little patch of like more firm, possibly more firm ground, um, like like dirt with a bit of shrubbery kind of growing on it. These sorts of patches are would be somewhat common in the uh in the lake you know i would say given your you know naturalist background that such islands can be problematic at times but at a quick glance it looks okay um i'll be honest the islands were were more like decorative but we can roll with it sure uh okay in which case what i'm going to do is uh oh shit yeah i'm going to back away you said the lightning sparks are about 10 foot radius yeah let me double check that uh actually i'm sorry it was 20 feet uh which means bruno feet. needs to make a dexterity save as well no nope, bruno's not wearing metal he doesn't have any kind of harness or not to like fuck bruno over but um i yeah this does um, ever wear, I think wear it, says, it, says, it says specifically holding or wearing metal i'll say that whatever small bits of metal don't count i think that I feel like that's more intended as armor sure um even though it doesn't strictly say we'll say 20 you know, feet eh okay this blast of about 20 feet uh kind well, of grounded I'm, out you know various points but I'm gonna move twenty five feet away. I'm gonna take He's the opportunity to, try to attack. do that for sure, for sure. For sure, um, for sure. Okay. Uh, another eighteen. Oh fuck off. Natural ten yeah. plus eight. I literally just have the dice I need for this. This three D ten bludgeoning. These big old slappers. Thing has. Plus a D4 of lightning. Alright. Um, so as it just manages to impact, you're going to take uh, um, oof, uh, 20 points of bludgeoning plus 9 lightning damage. Okay, so no, 20 no. points reduced to 10 because I... I did, I did that slightly wrong. Um, I, I added the D8. It's 9 plus 5 is 15 plus... Four is 19, 23 points of bludgeoning and six lightning. 23. So 23 reduced to uh, 11. To 11. Yep. And six points of lightning? Six points of lightning. Okay. So I'm now going to use Stone and Endurance. Okay. Um, which I believe is a D12 plus my con. Yeah. Okay. So reduce that by. To do this. Yes. By eight, 
which brings it to a total of 11 plus 6 is Three. 17 minus 8 yeah. Yeah. is 9 damage. Yeah. 17. Uh, and then I am going to dump a, I think just a level three cure wounds into myself. Okay. Eighteen points of healing. All right. Oh shit. Hmm? I okay. actually put. I yeah. I just actually put equals eighteen instead of plus eighteen. Yeah, and um, fuck in there. Um, oh, wait, I'm dead. Hold on. <laughs> All right. uh, no. Why is this? Oh, my God. Anything else you're going to uh, do on your turn? Um, action. No bonus Which, action cantrips, I don't think. So. Yeah, bonus action. I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, there's a bonus bunch of bonus action spells, but that's no Gucci for Michi. Uh, so yeah, I think that's my turn. <laughs> Gucci for Michi. All right. Um, uh, Savra will pull out her Yakula and uh, um, uh, you know she already has her shield on her, um, and we'll move forward. I'm gonna say that Bruno takes five extra feet of movement to move through total. Um, five, ten. 20 25 30 she'll just rush forward she kind of, actually no she'll she'll mount bruno uh i forgot to add to initiative um and we'll direct bruno in this fight eh fuck i don't know i don't know what she would do um no i think she would just run for this isn't exactly triceratops central this is environment what if Bruno um, runs him over? How how tall is? Yeah, Bruno you know that's a good point. Bruno's tall enough. Like probably, I I don't have that super handy, and I should. Uh, I would think about as tall as a human. Uh, oh, he's a shorty case. More or a bit more. He is a little bit on the short side. I made him a bit of a shorter triceratops just to you know be more practical for this. I think she will mount, and we'll have Bruno charge. I'll just say Bruno goes on her initiative. Uh, yeah, if she's, Bruno's, if she mounts him. Br oh my goodness, Triceratops are between 9.5 and 9.8 feet. Yeah, okay, so we'll say, yeah, we'll say a bit, a, as tall as Vin. Um, seven? Who's a pretty tall, yeah. We'll say seven, seven feet, because he's a bit on the small side of for Triceratops. Uh, and then he'll try to fucking charge uh, Bruno, uh, Savra, who is behind, we'll just go off to the side, who is mounted, Bruno. Bruno will try to charge and stomp all over this fucking thing. Um, do, 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 can't, I'll say he can make, he's just close enough to be able to charge through and actually do the mechanical charge of a Triceratops. Um, all right, so if the Triceratops moves at least 20 feet straight towards the creature and then hits it with a gore attack, so we will try to hit it with a gore attack. Definitely hits it with a gore attack. 426 damage reduced by half. 18 points of damage as he rushes forward and like impales uh you know lowers his head and just like knocks the fucking shit out of this like glob of ooze it's begin to like somewhat like like mold upwards into a more menacing uh shape uh those of you all watching kind of bracing it's even even um uh Savra on top kind of braces, expecting that burst of electricity but it doesn't come the impacts just kind of impact this ooze and they, they doesn't release the bursts of electricity that the arrow did. Um, Even though they're both piercing damage? They did not seem to be related to the piercing of the Weird. Gore. Huh. Um, both are non-magical. needs to make a strength, or both non-magical. It might have something to do with the arrow having metal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh... DC 13 strength save, or be not prone. It's Surely a natural it's one. No um, way. We'll, we'll say just kind of gets knocked slightly. 
and gets fucking donked. Like, like oh, wait, the ooze got in that one. Ooze got in that one. Oh, I thought Bruno uh, got in that strength one. Like, come on. <laughs> kind of like, like it's just like impact. Let me just double check. It's not. Oh, it is immune to being not prone, actually, which makes sense since it's a Yeah, so it's just kind, kind of, of an, it. yeah. Yeah, just kind of hits it. Non fluid. Wall balls. Uh, like, like it, you know, gets like knocked through and Bruno storms through it and gives like a, like a, I don't know what sound Triceratops make because they're fucking dinosaurs. Uh, he's like, like a and like yeah, rears like back and like moves to turn around. Um, avoiding yes. the extra ah. problem of the steps. <laughs> Uh, Actually, but... I'm pretty sure he says Triceratops yeah, noises. Triceratops noises. Triceratops. Uh, Lua, <laughs> you are up. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, I think seeing her, seeing what's going on, she go move next to her, her buddies over here for a little bit, take a look. <clears throat> and... um, real quickly, actually, at the very, at, the, at an initiative 20, you guys do notice a few of these, like, orange toads just kind of hopping in interested oh is that what's floating is that what's floating in uh the the Uh, actually let me switch to roll for this whatever okay yeah just a few few toads kind of hopping closer um that's it okay insight check on those toads uh okay so then she's gonna do the magic missile because she can the magic um, missile. If you think, what level would you like to cast it? Seeing how powerful this thing is, I think she'll go to the highest level. Level I do, tray. I do believe magic missile does not have any force damage, and there's no metal in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think that's go ahead and roll damage, and we'll see what happens. Eighteen. Pew, 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 pew. These uh five bolts of of pinkish, I think, energy impact it. Um, kind of gives like like a doesn't make any like there's there's like this low noise kind of like this more like a wobbly resonance uh, and does not release bursts of lightning. Takes the damage. It's like dealt full damage. She held her breath for that a little bit, not sure what was going to happen. <laughs> just a reminder, so- I moved Savra off to the side just to keep, because stacking tokens is weird. Found her. She's not actually over here. Okay, because I think she was here. Or no, she moved. She, she mounted Bruno she and is okay. directing Bruno. Which is why I moved uh, yeah, uh, I don't think there's anything else, but she will have her lantern out and like facing just in case. Like facing forward. Okay. There's no apparent effect, no no alterations to the uh, beast. Um, this ooze. Um, all right, the toads kind of hop closer and closer. Hippity hop, hoppity hip. There's five of them. Five of them. Yep. Yeah. He's kind of hopping towards the towards the commotion. All right, brings us to the ooze. Who, guys? I really appreciate you guys. Know I always roll bad on initiative for my monsters. I really appreciate you, uh, Jenny and Glass. Um, I'm here oh. for you. Yeah, I just yeah. really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to make all of its attacks against Bruno. No! We don't no. attack Bruno. Uh, gets three pseudopod attacks. Bruno! Oh! <laughs> yeah. How much health does Bruno have? Asking oh. for a friend. 70-ish, I think. 82. Uh, well, you know, we'll say two attacks against Bruno and Sabra's on top. She'll take one. Uh, this is just kind of, you know, flailing at pseudopods at this big creature in front. Um, so we'll make Sabra be the purple one. All the attacks right now. Uh, so against Bruno, <laughs> that is an 
11 and a 12, which both hit. And against Savra, it's a 17, which misses. I wrote a 3 and a 4 <laughs> against Bruno. Uh, but he had... Oh, wait, I was looking at... Yep, they both still hit, just barely. Looking at the oozes, AC. Um, yeah, so both hit, unfortunately. Um, I should, You would think I'd have the dice ready to roll, given that I've rolled them, like, twice already. But I keep just adding them all back to the rest of the dice. Let's fix that. There go. All right, first attack. Deals. Uh, pretty bad. 10 plus... Nope. Keep doing that. Uh, 13, 14. 18 points of bludgeoning and 4 points of uh, lightning damage to Bruno, who is for some reason not at max HP. He should be. Uh, how much did I just say that was? 18? 22? 22. And the second hit deals worse damage by a lot. 16, 18, 22, 29 points of damage. Uh, he's, you know, takes these two big bludgeoning hits. This, this fucking ooze reaches up. There's the lightning crackling within it of this, like, green, murky swamp water and just kind of just slapping into Bruno. Sovereign manages to lean in and deflect one aside with the shield. Um, Bruno's, you know, reasonably hurt from that, but not on death's door, but... Probably can't take too much more of it, um, of tanking this creature's interests. Uh, that is all it can do, or you are up. Um, I don't know if one, I think you both have pretty bad, I think Ori does have bad, doesn't he? Yeah, and, I have, I have a negative. Zero. Yeah. I have a negative. Yep, oh yep, my yep. All right. What would you like to do, Or You guys look around, you see all these little fucking glowy orange backed toads hopping towards you all reasonably menacingly actually that like you know they seem attracted to the noise Conf yeah but the conflict but they're just little fucking toad at the same time I have to say Bruno you said Bruno's reasonably hurt yes he is below half those two attacks and that static shock that got you Sven how much did that do to you did it, seven to him, I think. And, yeah. So not a ton. And it might kill that little frog. Alright. Seeing the frogs, not not knowing that they're hostile, but being trained in survival and nature, I think Orin would be like, watch those things, don't let them touch you. Uh, seeing as this place has like an spooky shit vibe mm -hmm. and then he will heft his hammer and charge in to try and smack this blob go for it you have to roll on that one to miss okay I still have advantage though because of Bruno uh, yeah um I would generally say it's something like a pseudopod you don't get it because it's like it's just a fucking ooze um and it's not like responding to threats it's very dumb overall um, I mean, why would you punish me for flanking? I would think also you would have to step into the oh, the water to flank. I'll say that if that reason, uh, since he's he's occupying this square, definitely hits. Ooh, I wasn't like miserably punished by Great Weapon Master that time. That's nice. All right. Um, that is magical damage, so it does hit. However, each hit will release uh, a burst of static. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just fixing the setting on the computer real quick. All right. Um, so I need, uh, uh, yeah, both hit attacks hit. Cleave into it, the magical uh, bludgeoning mallet, breaking off chunks of ooze and sending it out into the swamp. Uh, with both bursts sending blasts of electricity, uh, I need you and Savra to see, to make dex two dexterity saves. Savra's really good at these, you guys. However, Bruno, Savra's fucking great at these. Uh, 
Okay, I spoke too soon. Oh, I'm and I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, she rolled a nat twenty on her first one, and then a five. All right, two fails from Oren, one fail from Savra. Uh, the first one deals six points of lightning damage to you, Oren, and the second one deals twelve. Sabra takes that twelve as well. Why is she hurt? She's not hurt. She hasn't been hurt by anything, right? No. She just doesn't heal up because she's an NPC. One. All right. Anything else on your turn, Orin? Yeah. Action surging. Okay. Oh, I need to deal this damage. It was twenty-one. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, real quickly, I'm sorry. Let me let me deal with something before we handle this. Um, the frog lightning jolts, you know, around, impacting you and Sav right here, the grunt. The the frog is kind of like hopping forward, kind of hopping upward. Bolt of lightning hits it, and there's just this flash of a detonation oh. as the toad explodes. <sighs> Putting the explode in the toad. Uh, so I need you to also make a dexterity saving throw. This one's just a DC 11. You're throwing suicide bombing toads at us? What? No. All right, you do not. You you take no damage on a success. You kind of, you know, or and you're like, you know, aware of what, like, like the danger of these things and are like already partially like shielding as you see the, the toad just kind of hopping up into the lightning storm. Uh, Savra. Sorry, did you say Sven? Alex? Did we lose Alex? Might have. We might have lost him again. Oh. Oh. Hello? Hello? Internet dipped out again. Um. Oh. Yeah, probably. Um, I might not. I might pause for now. Yeah, take a take a break partway through this first round, and then take a break and see if if you can't figure out what's up with the internet. Sure. Um, cool.